Hello everyone, Sheena here. Um, it's um, I have got support. I have got the the, um, the spirit of the lovely Lou with me, who um, has been rendered silent. But it's okay, Lou. We've got your back because if anybody can talk, I can, and that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to do um, just what we would normally do, but only moi for this um, for this live. But we've got everything sorted, so we'll take you through it. And I'm going to have a look and see if I can see if there's anybody online yet. I can't see if anyone's joined us yet. Oh, there it is. I've got my hands. Yeah, I can see my hands. Yeah, brilliant. OK, um, let me try and get this bigger so I can see if there's anybody talking. Right, brilliant. Cheers, all. Right, so this is the brand new launch. This is a bird in the hand collection. So I have a plan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one sample that relates to each of the packs, each of the um, sets you can buy. And then we'll go through all the samples all together, just so it makes it really clear on what you um, what your options are. So this is the first one. This is the owl, as you can see, an absolutely gorgeous tag. Now, this collection has been designed so that everything makes everything else look even better. So all of the separate components, there's it's the biggest collection I think I've done in well in a long time because it not only has the stamps and the dies that you use to me bring in to you, but we've also got stencils and embossing folders in this one. And so this is how everything comes together. That's the one example of the first set, which is the owl. So if you're liking the look of the owl, that is exactly the kind of thing that you're going to be um, be getting. And it's a big pack. Now I'm gonna do this just once. I'm gonna just open this just so you can see how much you get in here. Because just to see the size, the scale of these stamps alone, and my hands are big, that is almost the full height of an A5 sheet. So really detailed stamps, corner stamps, um, background um, pattern stamps. So these are the ones that you're gonna use with anything in your craft stash not just for this collection, so really good worker ones. But check it out. The size of these. They're massive, huge, and plentiful, and really easy because there's one thing, um, great, I love colouring, as you know, and um, you know, inky backgrounds, all those things, techniques, but cutting out in me, not so much. Um, cutting out in ribbons, actually. Yeah, a ribbon can defeat me. Can render me silent trying to tie a bow. Um, but look at all these. So this is perfect. This 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 means you've got the decoupage all sorted, plus the embellishments all in that one pack. But that's the only one I'm going to do that with. Just know that all the other packs are as wonderful and plentiful as the L. So just again, so you can see the size of those die cuts. I've got a little board there. And that is us good to go with the L. So the next one, if you like, the look of this card this is the hummingbird and you'll notice there's different background elements coming in we'll talk come to them um uh, further on but absolutely stunning so if you want to go full color gorgeous tropical and really there's there's no limits on how bright you can go with this with a hummingbird as you can see isn't that just absolutely stunning i love this i wish i wish i could read what you're saying because um Unfortunately, on my um, little iPad there, why does it put white text on a white background? Why, Lou? Why? That's, you know, when you're getting on a bit and, uh, you know, you've got your old very focals there and you're doing the head tilts, it doesn't make it easy. Just saying. So this is the Hummingbird set. Layers up, um, for the big corner element, but you don't have to use the big corner element in this one. You can actually just use this and that alone. We're going to use that, so I'm going to pop that to one side. Um, as you can see, there's the die. So leafy things that you're going to use with all your other, um, you know, stuff in your craft stash too. Right now, if you want to go a little bit more of the uh, nod to your Edgar Allan Poe, a bit more slightly gothic, I just, I just love this. So the point it being, this it's all bird and tag related. It's tag format and bird themed. I wanted as varied birds as possible, um, short of maybe a turkey. I don't know how often, you know, other than the American Thanksgiving, you're going to want a turkey. But, and they're not the most attractive, I'm just saying. But I went for birds that were attractive, but also very, very different and very different feel too. And I think the crow, I love this. Look at what Debbie's doing. Look at this. 
you know what, I've, I've actually looked at this and this is the first time I've actually noticed this gorgeous little, look how fun you can get with that. I love that. So these are the tags that you're going to cut out in the set as well. Um, that's the crow. The crow, it's not, it's the raven. Quote the raven. There's much more, it's the crow. Yeah, it's the raven. All right. And they're the, they're the, um, the dies and the stamps. And again, a little odd to you, nod to you, um, Edgar Allan Poe there um, with the wording. And they're the dies. And then the last of the um, birds is the flamingo. I love flamingos. Flamingos are fun. Flamingos to me always remind me of like a um, 50s kind of um, America. You know, you'd have those winged glasses like your Dean Metna and you'd have inflatable flamingos near the pool. That's in my head anyway. And that's where I am right now back in the room now though but you can see how this works brilliantly with the tags you can have it offset if you keep them straight if you just keep it to that tag dimension i've measured them so that they fit really easily in a dl envelope so easy to post but if you want to go a little bit quirkier then you just need to pop that in an eight by eight envelope all is good and look at the dimension look at how the water's forward the birds and then you're looking through and i just think the way these fronds and palms work Super cool. That's the set for the flamingo. And again, it's the stamps and dies and the wording. So everything in there. And I love the fact that even the wing has been as a separate die for you. So that makes it so easy to decoupage up. And that is the, um, just so you can see the amount and the size of the die cuts. Now, the next one, this is, right, this is super cool. This is the traditional shape tag but the larger tag is very distressed the smaller one less so but you can also always do that by tune up the corners and the edges of your card but it also includes the embossing folder let me show the kind of elements show you the kind of elements that are in there so you've got that shaped tag that's the large distressed tag this fabulous background as you can see there, if I lift it up a little bit, you'll see that it looks like um, old plaster, but it's really cool. It's um, black cord and it looks like, I don't know whose it is, Lisa's, what has she got? Oh, oxides. So she's used oxides on there. And I just think it's fabulous because then it looks like um, old chalky kind of plaster. But these elements here are also included. Those dies there are also in the pack. So you've got the embossing folder that, it's going to give you that gorgeous pattern. You've got the dies that are going to give you these fabulous accents that kind of break out from the from the um, the constraints of the of the tag, and you've got your shaped tags, and you've also got to and from on there, which again is a fabulous worker set because you're going to be able to use that time and time again with whatever you are using in your craft stash. And then the final box set. Um, is this one here, which is going to give you this look with the arch windows. It's going to cut you a solid for the background, um, an overlay arch, but also you can cut an inlay. So if you remember that card with the um, that gorgeous um, hummingbird card, that was cut into the card. And this is the kind of thing you're going to be able to create with that one. Last two things, just quickly, so we can start playing, are the stencils so this is the first stencil here so again these are going to be useful time and time again in many um in different scenarios you can use them and you can make them you can repeat them so even though they're dl you can just repeat that stencil over an eight by eight and these ones again just make a, a background by kind of um tiling them but that there just gives you a quick um idea of what those looks look like just with a simple inking and then the last stencil this one here. How did I pack all of this into uh, an hour? Seriously? Um, and, and I think it's important though that you see these because um, once we've done this, then we're going to have a look at some more samples, more fabulous cards, and then we're going to play. But hopefully that has given you a clear um, kind of look at what you are getting and what your choices are. So let me tidy up and then we'll look at some of the other fabulous things that the team have created um right let me have a look so we'll start with the owl so we've got the owl and again i wish i could see what you were seeing but i can't right so what we've got is um 
we've got the L with the different backgrounds. Just note the different backgrounds and different options that you've got here. So you've got a, a card that's been cut on the fold, just short of the fold. So those dies are going to cut through a good weight card, two of them, so you can make a folded card. Fabulous. Then you can also um, break outside of the constraints of that. Again, pop that in an 8 by 8 envelope. And in the background, this is going to allow you to put anything in there. You could pattern papers. You could put the um, embossed um, uh, background from the uh, folder. Um, loads of options, but even create your own little scene. Really simple scene. I love that. It's like a story and a card. If you aren't as confident with your colouring, but you want to make something that looks amazing, stick to monochrome. So Debbie's used um, blue and a touch of purple in this, and it looks absolutely stunning and i love this construction acetate look i think that is just amazing and again these are good dies that's impressive that it's cut out that way that is super super thick guys that is wow i'm impressed right and then look at this so you're back to the traditional tag stencil in the background this pattern here is just kind of like um second generation even third generation deliberately a little bit kind of hit and miss if you pick your stamp up in your hand and stamp it you're going to get that look but it's a really cool look um to make it look more distressed and so you're creating your own backing papers as well with it so absolutely fabulous and if you cut two tags score across the back glue the top with um a good wet glue then it's not just a tag it's a usable standing up card too so we'll motor on a little bit because, but you know, I think it's good that you can, there's no way I could give you this much inspiration in the time that we have, or Lou will be like begging me to let her go. She'll be like, we'll be Monday. And I'll be like, well, thanks, there was me weekend. Um, so I think the best way the, the, to do this is to, for you to see the samples because, and, and if there's anything there I can think of, I'll pick it up. A um, little bit of um, dimension paste or texture paste, anything like that monochrome on a larger scale if you want to if you want to make them quicker you can do that this one um again just one color doesn't have to take ages to do but it looks really impressive great man's card and then again you can put everything together and expand it to an eight by eight because of the size of those images they work great right moving on that's the owl we're gonna look at the um the gorgeous hummingbird next so this is the card that we're going to, it's going to be kind of the, the start of the inspiration because I've got lots of bits and pieces I've made. So it's going to be one of those shows when I'm going to do little bits and pieces and we're going to mix and match. But this will be the starter. Um, we'll probably go off on a tangent, but I love that card. This is um, Pam's, it is a beauty. Pam, it is a beauty. I love the colouring and I love this background. So this is using texture paste, clear texture paste on a white card. And um, and then inking, and we're going to do show you how that works very soon. So I'm going to pop that to one side. Look at the colours in this. This background, if you like this look here, salt. Just ink your background. Make sure it's wet. Drop a bit of salt in there. Um, even if you use that sponge technique that I keep like you know using, that would work too. But absolutely fabulous colour. And look at all the the leaves tucked in. See layering them up. Um, expanding that um, shape if you want to take it further that's where all of these separate leaves will come in love it so that's the trad traditional tag shape background then we've got the um archway again that um that is like a stained glass window you know that would be fabulous for christmas imagine your christmas scenes with that in front of it oh, oh i might find another tangent there okay back in the room again and then this look isn't that Oh, Mother's Day. Perfect. You'd have to be quick, though. Yeah. You've only got a couple of days, haven't you? But that would be a perfect Mother's Day card. Um, absolutely joyous and full of colour and beauty. And then if you want to make it quicker and don't want to go with dimension, but want to highlight the um, die cuts, do what Sharon's done and just use a Murray uh, die cut and offset it. And it gives that little those little elements that extra little um pop and bling and you can see she hasn't used the big um background image just use that first layer to show that off there which works perfectly right next one raven 
I'm playing around where to put places. I'm just seriously, I've got a big desk and it's full. I have things on the floor. I've got things behind me. Ah, I need ceiling hooks as well and air hooks. Right, so this one, fabulous. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? So um, using the Gothic arch again and the background could have gorgeous that. So that's what you can do with your distress inks, with your stencils. These corners are part of the whole set as well. So the stamp and the die. And then this, of you can see how I've um, drawn this so it fits. It looks like the branch is twisting, but it still fits within that DL size, size, size. I love that. And that's Lisa's card. Fabulous. And then Debbie's uh, Raven again, um, showing that fabulous background there. So it's um, debossed using the embossing folder. And then the smaller folder on top. So you can see the size there. Absolutely gorgeous. Another one here using the um, a little bit of the, if you like this bling on there, I don't know if you can pick that up, but I'm going to tell you now, have a look for the Van Gogh special effect watercolour set. That's the one that you, oh, I saw heart. Yay. I can't see words, but I can see little things. So little symbols. Yay. Make them happy ones though, or kind of, you know, or kind of, yeah, I might cry. So yeah, love that. Brilliant. Yay. And look at this. Fabulous. So if you want to make it a, a bigger card, Debbie's folded there and made kind of like a fancy gate for there's probably a name for this, you know, but my cards, seriously, I'm not the engineer when it comes to cards. They do that or they do that sometimes. My cards. Yeah, Sam. Sam was like, it's like rocking, thinking of like, yeah, really. There's like Sam on one side and me on the other. And um, that's about as adventurous as I would probably ever get. Yeah. Don't even want to talk about the time I tried to do a waterfall card. Oh, oh I had to. Yeah, it took me about a week and then a week to recover. So um, and then we've got this larger format here looking fabulous again on the um, like an eight by eight or a slightly kind of narrower eight by eight. So that is the, um, the Raven. And then Flamingo. All right, so check this out. I love this. And you know what? I love this. This is Lisa's, I'm sure. And I love what Lisa's done. Yeah. So what she's done is, I'm hoping you can see that if I lift that up, she's got really fancy with the colour in a flamingo. Because you think flamingo, I'm going to go painted pink, maybe peachy. Lovely. Works great. But she's got bits of green and things in there. How cool is that? Yellow and like a, like a, a kind of a liney, yellowy colour in there. It looks quite um, fluorescent paint. I love that. That looks really cool. Um, and again, this looks like I'm at some posh spa and um, looking out and, you know, the flamingos are walking by. Yeah. Maybe a stately home with flamingos instead of peacocks. I don't get out much. So, you know, I have to fantasise with me cards, just saying. So, um, Again, look at the look at the background on this. Um, why fit in when you were meant to stand out? Absolutely beautiful. So using your um, different techniques, you could use your um, acrylic paints, um, distress inks, oxides, whatever, to create these fabulous backgrounds. And but if you want to take advantage of the folder again, you can just pop them against there, and then these die cuts again in that extra pack. Love this little bit of. Uh, stickles on there a little bit of glitter glue for a bit of bling this is see each card like you wouldn't necessarily put the bling on the raven but you put the fluorescent that iridescent um color on there so each each bird is going to let you use a different type of palette and different techniques which is exactly what i want because you've got looking at it from a an end product kind of viewpoint as a designer but also a a creative viewpoint on what will that allow me to play with and I think when you get it right this is what you get from an amazing design team like I have absolutely stunning and then a bit of glitter card through there and then if you want to go full on expanding the dimensions of that card too right that hopefully has given you um, a good bit of inspiration but you know what that you, you could go on and on. There's so much that you can play with with this with this set. But I think what we'll do, we'll start playing right now. And the first thing we'll do is we'll show you how I would stamp and cut. So if I just got this pack, 
the first thing I would be looking at is get, I'd probably get all my dies out, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'd get the dies. Oh, yes, I need to mention there is a competition running. So you need to comment. If you comment, you're going to be in with the chance of winning. Um, I'm not quite sure. A bundle, a bundle. And it's going to be um, announced at the end of this um, this demonstration, this launch. So just comment and you're going to be in with a chance of that. So get your dies out. OK, so don't forget to comment. Preferably nice ones. And then um, cut like the wind. Cut all of your card out. So think of the kind of things you're going to like to colour in with. Um, I know that I want to use that, the, um, the card, the construction. Um, no, I'll tell you what it's called. It's the textured white cord is the bundle. You can also got the watercolour cord, but the, text, the, the textured white cord is my absolute favourite. That's my go-to because I know I'm going to want to use a water-based product on it. So cut everything out, put them in little piles, Get you because I usually have to clear the, the, the decks to get anything out to play with. So make some room with the die cut. I do that, then do the stamping, which is exactly what I'm going to do now. So... Um, I'm going to use part of this. I'm going to use this layer here and just show you how, even though you, um, we only want this part of this flower, it's pointless giving you another stamp with just that flower because it's within this larger design. So all we need to do is ink up the area that we need. But before we do that, get your card and kind of see, get your eye in before there's any ink in the mix so that it doesn't get messy and you can see exactly where it's going to fit. That's kind of like a trial run. So we're good with that. So the next thing you're going to do is use the appropriate ink. Now, this, this is a brand new ink pad. Wow, that is super juicy. Right. Chances are you're going to get a bit of ink on your fingers. <laughs> um, very likely I'm going to get ink on my fingers here because um, it is a brand new ink pad. And I've already touched it. And But that, if that's the worst that's going to happen, I can live with that. So um, choose the appropriate ink. I have ink that up with the VersaFine Claire, which I love that ink because it's um, water resistant. It's a bit slower drying, so it gives you a little bit of time to, um, if you don't pick up all the ink when I do this now, so the secret is keep one hand anchored all the time while the other hand you move across and just kind of, um, you know, apply some pressure. Um, and hopefully you've picked all those lines up. But if you didn't, the beauty of a slow drying ink is that when you lift it up, if I had missed a little bit, which actually I haven't, you maybe see on that little corner, if you think, oh, I want to just look at your stamp and you might see a little bit of ink still hanging on there. And there's none there. So what you can do, just carefully reposition it. Don't apply any pressure, then press down again. And that's where something like a, the VersaFine clay rather than stays on is a plus for you because it uh, stays on with dry really quickly. So that's it. That's what you're going to do you, to stamp the um, items that you're going to colour. So I'm going to pop that to one side. I'm going to put this back on here, tidy it up later. And then before we do some colouring, just to mix it up, we'll look at backgrounds and we'll come back to that. How about that? Um, I just think it's nice just to, you know, to, to kind of keep breaking it up a little bit like that. So we'll pop these away, pop back in there, and we'll talk about So before I do talk about that, though, I do have everything pre-stamped. And for this one, I've actually got it stamped with a really pale distressing because I wanted to have that, like, no line look. So, um, you know, um, tea dye or... Um, the aged paper as it's it's called something like pumice stone's a little bit grayish so um yeah a really pale um distress ink because when we color it in we don't want to see the lines so they're ready to play with and but in the meantime let's talk about background options so the first one is this one here i was talking about so this one is um it's been stenciled using a texture paste. So the texture paste, the only thing is, again, with this one, this is one of those things that I would do if you, when you're doing all your die cutting and you have a kind of a session of doing all your die cutting, have a session using a texture plate paste as well because it's got time, it needs time to dry. So you may as well do more than one 
and get a few going and lie them out all over the dining room table or wherever it is, all over the house um, to dry. And then next day, you're ready to play with them. So, which is exactly where we're at here. So what we've got now is dimension, but we've also got a plasticky um, resistant surface, which means that when we ink this up now with our, um, see, we'll use broken china and chipped sapphire, we can ink directly over that shiny surface using just a large applicator. You don't need to do anything, um, you know, use a, a, any, be very delicate or careful with this. You just can really go for it. Look at that, just straight on there. Um, the texture piece, and um, this one is a cosmic shimmer one, but you can, you know, any kind of um texture piece, there's loads of good quality texture piece on there. Have a look on Craft Stash and just put in texture piece, and um, and you're going to be good, you're going to be good to go. So many, and there's so many in the art world as well. You know, before we discovered them in the um, crafting world, um, you know, that's something that um, often. As crafters, we have things that artists don't know about. Like, and I'm talking quietly like that as if we're not going to tell them, right? But things like, you know, all the mica paints and things, they're like that, they're just kind of um that's a novelty to, to your to your art world or mica paints. To us, it's like, what been doing that for years. Yeah, I can't even remember the first time I used my mica paints. But in the art world, quite a, a new thing. But texture paste opposite they kind of they're quite aware of that um for you know wall art and things whereas we've brought that into more crafting in recent years and um you know with all the mixed media that um we're into now so um yeah loads to choose from but make sure if you you don't want to um you don't want to um I like the chalky one you don't want one that dries kind of like a, a plaster you want the one that dries clear and it's like a plasticky finish okay because that one would, would, you can still use it, it'll resist it, but it doesn't resist like this one does. And you can see how easy that was and how effective it is. But the next thing you want to do is take your um, piece of clean, dry paper and just give it a, a buff or rub it, wipe that off. And you see how now we've gone back to really nice, bright white background. So that's one option we have. Then this is, this is the way I love when I've done a couple of shows or made a couple of samples and I've got little bits and pieces because we can bring all these things in together and show you how we've tweaked it, okay? So that there would be one option to go on a DL card. So you could do that, pop it on a DL card, look fantastic, fabulous, as does that. All right, winner, winner, chicken dinner, brilliant. But you could alternatively, make your card base like we just said about scoring across the top wet glue and um create a tag shape instead to then glue on top of that one and then you've got um not only the texture but you've got the tag kind of um dimension and shape so that's one thing you can do the other thing you might want to do shall we do an embossed um we'll use embossing folders as well Let's pop one of those through and show you an option we can do there as well. I'm trying to give you as much inspiration and as um, as quickly as possible because when you have a set as huge as this, um, like I say, you would need a I need a um, I need to a week I think um, of shows and dems to to get through it all to just really highlight what you can do with this so first thing to decide is if you want it embossed or debossed so if you want it so that the it's going to be raised the pattern make sure you're looking at the colored bit if you want it debossed you're going to put it around the opposite way if it's a coated card does that make sense because if you're going to make a tag as well these aren't symmetrical so you need to remember which way the tag is up so it's not like you can just flip it over if you go, oh, I've done the wrong side. I've wanted it embossed or debossed. Hopefully that makes sense. But we're going to have this one embossed. So we'll pop that in there. Shut that. I'm going to run this through the folder. You're not going to see it because it's not that exciting anyway, to be honest. You'll hear a bit of noise. But um, it's like, it's like, yeah, we've heard a bit of noise since you started, Sheena. But <laughs> we'll pop that through. Oh, hang on. Got too many bits of meat sandwich. 
Right. It's all going swimmingly. It's like clockwork. Streamline. I didn't have too many plates in the sandwich at all. I love the fact that the modern um, die cutting machines are just, are you kidding? You're having a laugh? All right, so now we've got a beautifully embossed tag. And I think it looks fabulous just like that. I really, you know, that's, oh, it's just joyous. And you get the right colour card. So we'll come back to this because there's options as well. Because what you can do, another easy quick fix for this is if you want to make that look even more opulent, opulent and um, a bit posh, um, use a bit of gilding wax on a dark colour. This is the secret to your success. And the secret to your success with gilding wax is take the majority off your finger before you use it and build it up slowly. So light pressure. Is everybody still there? Show me symbols. Show me a happy symbol. Give me, give me, a, give me a heart or a smiley or something like that if you're still there, people. Because then I'll know that I'm still, uh, you know, I'm not talking to myself in a, in a. Yay. Okay, so if you just see now, I love. Oh, that is a nice combination. The gold on that dark burgundy look. Now I'm not. I'm deliberately catching the background as well because the thing is, unless you've got a massively dense you know it's um pattern you you are going to catch the background so you may as well make that a feature as well but just make sure that you've got more of your um product on your raised areas and that's just by building it up the color of this card um having a clue it's a purpley 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 dark purpley the make again Sorry, can't help you. You know what? You know, it's one of those cards, you know, you've got them in your craft stash and then you look at them and you can't remember where you got it and when and how long you got it from. Um, uh, but, yeah, Lou's going to look for something similar. Well, hey, thanks, Lou. Um, yeah, um, there will be. There, I'm sure there will be. Um, just a, you know, a nice, you don't want a textured card necessarily because you're going to pick up the texture of that card with your gilding wax as well so um a plain surface card that you are going to put the pattern on that you want and then you're just going to build this up and you know when you um when they use traditional gilding back in the day um with you know the, the leaf the gold leaf you would use kind of a dark red kind of a, a horrible name but oxblood kind of red color which showed off the gold, it like gave it a glow behind, and it was a good base colour for um for for that you know gold leaf, and this is quite similar because it's got that you know warm tone background, but it's dark enough to really make that pop. Now the fun bit is with this is um when we've got that gilding wax on there, just building up. You can put a little bit more on if you want, but you know it's no meant to stop as well. That's almost dry already. Um, I would leave it to dry a little bit longer if you had the time, but we don't. But you do need a dry cloth. And then if you buff this, if it's the one like the, the pebby one that's got the real kind of metal in it, it literally does. And you can feel it. The paper slides across the surface. But this is where a good set, a good collection let you get your stuff out your craft stash and go, oh, I haven't played with that in ages. I haven't I haven't used my um, gilding wax in ages, so I'm a happy camper. And look, oh, isn't that just a thing of beauty? So that there, it might be right for the hummingbird or not, but it, I think it will be absolutely perfect for the crow. The crow, I said a crow, the raven, the raven. I'm just not posh enough. I mean, the raven. Yeah, the crow sounds awful, doesn't it? Crow. Yeah, there's no romance with the crows. That, but um, and crows always look like there's trouble to me. You know, when you see a crow, they always look like they look like the the um like a like the like the miserable with coats that are too big on them. You know, black like coat. I'm gonna stop talking now. Yeah, this is where I need somebody to tell me to stop talking. But you can see how now that would work. I think that would be a perfect background for the raven. Yeah. See what I did there? Oh, oh, yeah, look, there. 
This is where we've got, this is where the beauty of having these bits and pieces where I can give you more inspiration as we go. We haven't even got to colour in the hummingbird yet, but I think this is all worthwhile stuff to show you because if you can add to the collection, you've got more and more options as you go. I really like that one. Um, yeah, I like that. That combination works really well, I think. Uh, just different backgrounds for different looks. All right, so there's a couple of backgrounds for you. Um, I'm going to wipe this up here and then we'll do a little bit of watercolouring with our hummingbird. And we should hopefully get to a point where we can almost stick a thing together. I liken that noise there. Nice squeak there. That's the, that's the key ash thing in. Right there, the only one. Lovely. Right, actually, it's a good thing. Baby wipes take that off really well. Um, just in case you wondered if you think, oh, um, how do you get it off your hands? That's the answer. Right, okay. Let me find my stuff in the pile of other stuff I have here. Okay, so now I have one that has started colouring here. And But what we're going to do is we'll colour the hummingbird and the flowers in together. If that sounds like a plan to you, when I find the hummingbird, there you go. All right, got the hummingbird and got the flowers. So what I would do, even though you can see that I have coloured this hummingbird, not finished, it's not complete. I've actually got a complete one. This is what we're going to colour it in to look like very soon. But you can see what I did here, and it's a, it's a good little tip. If you know you've got areas that you're going to decoupage over, like I know that that there is going to sit on top of that, and I know these flowers are going to sit on top of this, um, use that as a practice trial run because you're going to want some colour underneath the edges anyway so that when you, you do decoupage this, you don't see any bits showing underneath. So use that as a as a like a, a trial run on that. So let's colour this, start colouring this um, hummingbird in. And then I've got flowers that we started so we can see how long it's going to take. So what I'm going to do, this is perfect. If you use, if you like to use um, alcohol pens, you would just stamp in the appropriate ink, use the appropriate card. And these are perfect for that, for alcohol pen colouring. So if you don't like the messy watercolours or, or um in watercolour pencils, that's an option. The other option is you could colour them in with your wax-based pencils, your Faber-Castell pencils, your, your, um, that'll work great. Um, but what I'm going to use are watercolours. Watercolour pencils would be really um, great for this too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out the colours that I want to um, to use, first of all. Now, all Ev this is if you're wondering what this set is this is the van gogh um i think it's called the essentials plus three and it's on craft stash that's where i got mine so if you have a look it should be there um and it's it's a phenomenal value set because the quality of these paints is i never use rubbish quality because it's pointless and this is supposed to be student grade but you know what it's so good that I know there's lots of professional watercolorists rate this a lot for even light fastness so it's a really great set so what I would say is make a color chart and then decide on the colors you want so if you look at colors and you think look at pictures of hummingbirds if you're not sure and see what all those gorgeous colors are so the first thing we're going to mix is a kind of a, um, a teal kind of a blue like a greeny tealy blue so I'm going to pop some of that in there maybe a little bit of that and then I'm going to pop a little bit of green in there because that's basically what that kind of, you know, that colour, like petroly blue, I would say. Yeah. And that's quite thick. So that's the first colour we've got mixed. And I'm good to go with that. Another one is we want a nice purple. So if you look on this colour chart, that's a great pink to use to mix a purple. Um. People often ask, How do you, what do you mean about warm and a cool colour? Technically, you've got your yellow, your red and your blue, which are your primary colours. They're not. They're those there. So you can make any colour with any of those. But you'll get better versions of certain colours by using certain versions of each primary. So, for example, that there is a cool red because it's pinky. That's a warm red because it's fiery. You can see it looks next to the yellow. Imagine a fire. That's the kind of, you wouldn't see that in a fire. You'd see that in a fire. You'd see that on a rose, but you wouldn't see it. But 
not that in a fire. So you've got that's a warmer yellow than that yellow. And then the blue that we're going to mix is we're going to use this blue with that. That blue would probably work too, but we're going to mix it with that one, with that pinky red. So just saying, if you mix it with a warm red, you'll get, um, it won't be a bright, vibrant purple. It'll be a bit murky. So there's an extra little bit for you. All right, so we're going to use that blue, pop that in there. And now we have a beautiful purple. You might want a little bit more pinky or a bit more bluey, but you can do that as you go along, just test them out. And then the last one is just this green, and I'm not even going to mix that green because it's sap green and I love that green. It's just such a pretty green. So, right, now we're going to use this really loose, kind of almost wet into wet um, approach here. So I'm literally wetting the whole of the cord. So this is where you needed to make sure that your cord that you were cut out of was the appropriate cord. So the um, the textured white cord or the watercolour cord, fabulous. My, like I say, my preference, I love the textured white. So now you're going to take some of these colours and just start applying them. Now, I'm not worried about um, covering over the detail because, you know, even if you stamp, you still see that even that very pale line through more often than not and if you don't you can refer to your um your um reference to find out um where it would go look at the look at the packaging and give you a little bit of a help there so the other thing to mention is this is the base coat so a lot of often when people watercolor they'll not necessarily do it all in one hit they'll um watercolor artists will, will paint something and they'll let it dry and then they'll come back and go over it um, to add the uh, a stronger coat. So you're placing the colours down to start with, but the next time you're getting the vibrancy and the, the detail. So don't think that you have to plaster it on first time to get it you know, um, the way you want it, you're going to be able to, and it's going to look a bit more kind of um, blended if you use this approach rather than, and then you, you see how that's all kind of smushing in together without you having to worry about blending it too much. And, and the secret is leaving it now, right? We can pop a little bit of this black on the beak just to get that mapped out. And even if you go across to the face a little bit, we can just pop this on but what you would want to do absolutely is just leave this at this stage let this dry you can dry it with your um with your heat gun once the colors have stopped merging in together because the reason you do that wet into wet that wet background then put the colors on is that they, you don't get harsh lines then you don't get a, a transition a block it all kind of just blends nicely as if it's almost airbrushed that there is going to now allow you to go back and get fancy with the detail, which is where we're at with this one. So I'm going to just get a bit of paper and tidy this up a little bit and then show you how. So I've already added another layer to this one, but we can still pop that colour out a little bit more and a little bit more detail where we want. So if I want this green a little bit more intense, I can just go over and the other thing I should mention is these brushes, these um, Van Gogh brushes, absolutely fabulous brushes. If you, when you look at just, there's a set that has the number, um, the number four, it's got three in. It, I can't remember which three they're in, but they're kind of a medium size set. Look at the set of the one that includes the, the number four size brush. And if you're only going to buy one set, these are really, really great brushes so yeah another little tip there for you there there i would definitely if you can pop them in your bas in your uh, basket because they are exceptional right so what i'm doing here is i'm just going around and just picking out strengthening colors where i want the colors to be a little bit more um intense but i've already got that and also use the brush to give it a little bit of texture so if i want to give these wings a little bit of a a kind of um emphasize the 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 shape and the direction you can use your brush to just give some little 
kind of indications of feathers. And the same with the, the green. And even if you, um, you know, the green mixes in with the purple a bit, you if you stick to those three colours, you literally are just using the same palette. You know when they say it works because it's all in the same palette. It literally is all from the same palette. Now that there, we're going to dry that. We're going to add a little bit of highlight, but we're going to add a little bit of shading. I'll show you a really cool way to show to add the shading um, where you don't have to be. Literally, if you did that and did that again, and that's as much detail as you want to do, this shading bit I'm going to show you is going to get it's going to make all the difference. So we'll dry this. So it was really important that this is dry for this next bit. If it's not, it'll just it'll lead to not good things. It'll be a smushy mess. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the dark blue, that chipped sapphire, and I'm going around this side, the underside of this hummingbird, and just catching the underside of the, of the bird there and what that's doing and the edge of the wings. And what it's doing is it's contouring it, it's shaping it so it makes it look 3D without you having to get fancy with blending and think, oh, no, I'm, it's gone wrong. It literally is a fabulous way of giving it that contoured. Can you see how much better that looks there with it? If I hold that up with it, yeah, it really is a great little... And you think, oh, it looks darker. Don't worry, because that looks darker, but it'll make somewhere else look lighter. And especially if you do this next bit here. So if you think, oh, one bit of highlight on there, we've lost a little bit of, you know, um, you know, a little bit of the accent. Pop a little bit of a white pen on. Now that white pen I'm using is really, an, it's a nice pen. But if you're not quick with it, it it'll set. If you're quick, you can blend it out. Um, so just be aware of that. So if we pop a little bit of a highlight here now if i left that even you know longer than like now that's already starting to set and once it is set um you can't it doesn't blend out as um as easily then so but your regular like ball pen you know your sakura white gel pens and things you're pretty much um safe with them that you can blend them out um you know, let them dry and they'll still blend with a little bit of water. And it gives it a much softer look um, because, you know, you wouldn't get that laser harsh line unless you were talking metal or something, you know, glass that was super, super shiny and, you know, feathers aren't. So, right, pop a little bit of that there. And then, then it's, it just depends how far and how much you want to add to these. And But the thing is, if you are going further and adding to these, you're also learning stuff. You're trying stuff out. You think, you're, you're testing yourself and you're pushing yourself that bit further. And you think, oh, look at that. Wow. That, yeah, that worked. That's great. So you'll do it with more confidence the next time. So that looks pretty cool. I think that looks really pretty. But if you want to make it look more blingy, Da, da, da. We're going Spielberg special effect now. Not really Van Gogh special effect. Oh, ah, brilliant. Teresa, apparently you, you've been asking how to add the iridescent. Well, here it is coming at you. So these colours here, this is the Van Gogh special effect set. Amazing. It's so packed with the stuff that you need. So no fillers, just the stuff like the metallic powders or the mica interference powders and the binder. They, they last in ages and ages. So these ones here are quite pretty much what you see is what you're going to get. They're silver, gold, copper. They're, that's them. These ones, not so much. Those are little tricksy things, those ones, because when you put them on black card, um, I mean, I've got any black card here, you get all kinds of fabulous um crazy effects like i'm going to use the back of this cord here so for example i'm going to let me just put a bit of water big tip is before you can use any watercolors in the pans like these put some water on them let them sit for a minute or two because that 
then um, softens uh, just the top layer and it makes them easier to work with. So this one here, and this is the one that I'm definitely going to put on this um, little bird here. It looks just white, but watch. And when it dries, you see it even more. Is that showing up on there? Hoping it is. Um, this one, this is going to be a red pop, purple. Ooh, gorgeous. Now, like all micas, um, you don't see the full effect until the water evaporates. But all those colours there are going to sit on top of your watercolours, your pens, whatever. And it makes them all into a mica paint. Absolutely fabulous. So hopefully you can see that. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the purple possibly those three actually you know we could get away with it with all three so let's yeah why not do more is more you know what i'm saying be careful because less is let no less is more there nah, we'll do more and more um all right so what i'm going to do is just catch little bits of the bird i don't want to make it all super shiny because it's all about the contrast isn't it and we'll pop a little bit of the blue maybe on his head here or her head Poor Lou, she's, she's very poorly. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah, just, just, yeah. Plenty of hot drinks. Paracetamol in the hot water bottle, Lou. There you go. <laughs> Dr. Douglas there, sorting you out, so, sorted. All right, so I think I'm just going to, ooh, that. The purple's lovely too. Right, okay, right. I'm going to stop now because I don't want, I still want to see that colour underneath and I don't want it to just, it, it's like glitter. You know, I love a bit of some glitter, but not everywhere because you don't see the bits that are glittered. If it's all glittered, it's like, you know, without the dark, there is no light. I sound like uh, Yoda. There you go. So there you have our very pretty special effect little hummingbird. Um, hopefully you can pick out the, the light and the glint. If you want it lighter, you can. Let me paint these flowers and then we'll pop this together. And then I think that we've, we've packed quite a bit in, I think. And um, hopefully giving you some good inspiration. Right, so what I've done here with these two is I've, I've basically used just that one colour, that pinky colour there. And I put a wash over the whole thing and then put a little bit darker version towards the center. And now I'm gonna take my brush and use just flicky kind of movements like this to pull out from the center like that. And then dry my brush and just gently blend little bits of it in a little bit more so that it gives the, what I'm doing is I'm following the, the lines that I've got on the stamp, that's your, that, that's your clue there. And it's making the flower look like um, the veins are following the shape of the petals. So continue with that there. And it's so basically it's creating a shadow at the base where it's gonna dip in and then lightening it towards the outside of the petal. And without color mixing or getting fancy with that, you that's really you don't need to that does the job doesn't it and then we've got that there that's we'll say that one's done we can shade that little bit in the middle if we want shortly and we'll do the same with this one here so we'll use this purple and we'll drag that out towards the center so the thing is with your purples you know you there's it's such a lovely color i love purple anyway but you can make it more bluey, you can make it more pinky. It just depends on how much red or pink you put in as opposed to the blue. So that's your call. This is a little bit more bluey, I think, than Pamela's was. Yeah, a little bit darker as well. She's used a bit more of a, a subtle approach, which subtle in me, you know, that's probably going to happen. <laughs> it doesn't really come straight to mind, does it? Um so I've darkened that bit there because I'm thinking that'll be underneath that petal where it'd be a bit of a shadow around there and in there. And then just drag that out again. But in, And if you find, if you think, oh, that looks a bit tricky, your watercolour pencils, all you would do with your pencils is scribble hard, like your pigment, your 
pencil towards the center, then blend out towards the outside with your um, with your brush. So I'm going to come back to that and um, give this a bit more um, detail divide to kind of like show one petal um, next to the, to the other one because it's got it's a little bit smushed in at the minute. But in the meantime, I'm going to color these leaves in. So your leaves, you can you can vary them. So if we use that nice sap green and maybe even a bit of this warm yellow, we can pop that and make these ones really quite uh, juicy kind of green. So we'll undercoat them with a bit of this warm yellow here. Oh, I've just painted over a bud. Oh no. If you're quick, you can lift that up though, as I just did. So we'll pop that on there. And then we're going to put a little bit in this one here. We'll make this one more of a, um, like a cooler green. So I'll pop a little bit of a bluey colour in that one. So these ones can be a, 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 you know, not, as, not as warm. So no, not as much yellow, more blue in that green. But these ones we'll come back to and add a little bit more of this darker um, sap green, just like that. So what I'm doing, I don't know if you can see that, I'm constantly drying my brush so that I've got control. This is where definitely, definitely don't try and do this, guys, with a water brush because you literally, you, you just don't have that level of control. Um, it's um the two they're all wet that they're, they're great you've got the place definitely if you want to do a a really smushy wet into wet background great for that but for precision coloring um i i couldn't use a water brush because it's surprising how little water you need to get the paint moving so i'm nearly done with that So it's, what I'm really wanting to do is make sure I've got the, um, you know, you've got one leaf next to the other. You've got a clear indicator of um, where one starts and the one finishes. So the way to do that is make this bit light there and that bit there dark. Can you see? So you can clearly see one leaf is in, in, um, in front of the other. We'll paint this little bud here pink while I remember. Just give that a quick wash over and then we can um, play with that in a minute and then we've got that cool green that I mixed for these frondy bits it needs a bit more colour on them but can you see how you're better off working and building it up than trying to go full on colour um, in one hit and it's less stressful that way too you can just take your time it doesn't have to be um, done super quick. If you put a, just a light wash on, then you can see if you're liking the colour. And you go, oh, OK. Once it's dry, pop a little bit more on. All good. All chilled here. So let me dry that up a little bit. So these centre bits definitely need to be um, reinforced, that bit in the middle. So I'm going to use a bit of this yellowy look here. And I think I'm going to pop a little bit of orangey colour in there as well just to give it a little bit of shape like that I'm going to emphasize that a bit a little bit in there as well but I do want to that one there the leaves need to be a bit more dark need to be a bit darker and also these petals need to be a bit more defined so I'm just going to use a little bit of I've mixed a little bit of um, blue with that purple that we already had and I'm just going around and just marking out where the petals um, uh, start and finish in that flower just to give it a little bit more definition 
but again, don't don't go over the top with it, or you're just going to be it's going to be like um, Groundhog Day. You'll be oh here we go again, oh another layer, and then it ends up like super dark because you just kept going, and you still can't see where the petals are. So cease and desist, put the brush down, walk away, nothing to see. That'll do. Thank you. That gives it. But again, in here should be darker. So we we'll use a bit of green, and we'll pop a little bit of blue in that. And possibly a little bit of that dark brown, just to create a much darker, warm green. And again, we can use the brush now because this is a. I'm not going to paint any more layers on top of this to um, emphasise the veins. If I want to do that, this is all just so much fun because you know you're, you're teaching, you're learning colouring, you're building your colouring skills, but you're also learning water colouring too at the same time on a really cute little picture without any, you know, anybody watching, no intimidation, it's all good, just take your time, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and every, every time, the only way to get good at colouring, it's like everything is to do it, you know, if you could pass your test with the, your driving test just on the theory, well then we'd all just do that but it's you can talk the talk but you've got to just get on there and give it a try and um and that's it it's it's just a, a muscle memory thing and uh noticing what works and what doesn't and um and that's it and it's also pretty empowering as well you know i love it when people share on the inkets or on my facebook page things that they've done and and it's like wow didn't know i could do this so hey and that's the best bit, and that's what the team love too. So also remember, which is definitely the time to say this, that there's always inspiration on me, Sheena's in Kets page um, group or my Facebook page, because that's where the team hang out. And they're there to tell you all kinds of wonderful um, anything, all of the samples. If you see something, you think, how have they done that? How have they done that? Well, just ask them because that's where they are. It's like the virtual double deckers hang out. Right. So say we're, I'm not going to stick this, but say we imagine we will we've got the background there we've got the oh you know what these little things haven't been colored there oh well you can imagine there yeah you'll be fine or Lou will be saying please so be like uh should have gone to bed the lights will be out you know they'll be just i should probably got a recording of little noises like little coughs and it'll be like you know middle of the night and i don't even know and she's been tucked up in bed for hours <laughs> Right, so put that there. I can take a hint. Uh, it's not like it hasn't happened before. <laughs> and we'll pop that there, and then you can see how how that's going to work there. So it's about knowing the bits to to pop make. What's going to be the star of your show? Your backgrounds are fabulous, but they should be backgrounds. So keep them less full on colour, and. Um, bit more muted you know put them in a place that you know you put baby in the corner put your backgrounds in the corner and then decide what the star of your show is so the star of the show is absolutely the bird and these two flowers um bird even more so because we've given that a bit more special effect and that's that's it that's how you that's how you do it we need to we need to announce a winner before i go though don't we are you ready for the winner Vivian Heal, you have won. You are a winner. Winner chicken dinner. There you go. Cheers. Oh, yeah, and 7 p.m. on YouTube. So um, you can watch it back again. And, um, yeah, it's like, it'll be like Groundhog Day for you. <laughs> if you're brave enough, if you think you've got it in you, watch it back. <laughs> it's been brilliant. Thank you, everybody. And I hope that was useful. Hope you got some tips and tricks and things to, um, you know, to go with as well and um, and enjoy the collection. And thank you for all the support. And thanks to your amazing team. Um, take care. And thank you to Lou. Without who, this would not have happened. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Cheers, everyone. Take care.